Hi guys, bonjour, this is Romy. Welcome for this new video dedicated to helping you make a great wedding on a budget. Today is part 2 of our wedding dress tutorial inspired by Meghan Markle. We are going to focus on the skirt part of the dress which will be slightly different as it's meant to be beginners friendly, budget friendly, busy schedule friendly and dance floor friendly. <laughs> but rest assured that we will try to keep the spirit of the simple yet sophisticated dress designed by Claire White Keller for the house of Givenchy, as well as emulate to the best of our abilities its minimal and feminine glory. We will need to check first our waist measurement, not on ourselves but on the bodice because we added a little ease, you know, for breathing and stuff. <laughs> we'll need as well the measurements between the darts and all the seams. The skirt we are creating is a simple three-quarter circle skirt but we'll divide it into eight gores in order to save fabric since we have a very tight budget to keep. So to trace our pattern, we will need a huge square sheet of paper with its side measuring at least twice the length of the skirt plus twice the radius. All right, brace yourself, it's gonna be dreadful. The radius for a three-quarter circle skirt equals the waist size divided by 1.5 times P. The waist will be 67 centimeters for my own dress and P equals about 3.14 for everyone. <laughs> So my radius is going to be 14.22 cm. Now, for the length of the skirt, you just need to measure from your waist down to the floor with your favorite shoes on, of course, plus 2 to 3 cm for the hem. The pattern I'm going to make for the sake of this tutorial is in a very small size, but for you to make it at the real scale, you will need to form a gigantic square with paper or newspaper or else, and with tape, and the side of this square should be at least two times the length of the skirt plus two times the radius. I just fold in four this paper and I'm going to measure and mark my radius and then repeat the same operation whilst moving my ruler bit by bit. And then you can see the waistline that starts to appear. So I'm tracing the line following all the dots and then I am going to measure and mark the length of the skirt. Like so. Then if you add both measurements together, so the radius plus the length of the skirt and use the same technique starting from the corner, you will see the hem of the skirt appear. Now let's cut every layers at once and of course it is much easier and faster with my tiny pattern. <laughs> and when it's done you can open your pattern and because we made all the calculations for a three quarter circle skirt we are simply going to get rid of the fourth quarter. And voila! This is our little three quarter circle skirt and it will close in the back with a zipper. All right, to be extra sure, take the time to check your waist size using a measuring tape and mark the center. From this point, place the darts, the side seams, and also divide by two both back gores. This way we are starting to create eight gores. So to do that, I fold my pattern at every mark. I am making sure that the waistline and the hemline are aligned this is going to guide me and if needed, trace a line in the crease and cut your gore. So I'm repeating that for every mark I made. Aligning, folding, tracing if needed. When it's all done, don't forget to number your pieces from left to right. Believe me, this is really a must. Then you can go ahead and cut all your gauze. You are going to place them onto your fabric and uh, don't stick them too close together. You will need to add about one centimeter for your seam allowance, except for the bottom of the skirt, because we already counted that allowance in our calculations. 
When the gores will be cut, we will sew them right sides together in the right order, preferably. <laughs> so please, please do not forget to number them. And now get ready to see on the screen my pieces full size. <laughs> Just so you know, placing them on the fabric is like a giant game of Tetris. Let's start with the two first pieces. Place them right sides together and baste them quickly with a contrasting thread. That will be easier to remove. Basting is never a waste of time. The true waste of time is to unstitch two pieces hastily sewn together. When it's done, we can repeat the same operation with the next core. I remove the number and I place my piece right sides together. Again, I'm basting quickly. To start and to end a basting thread, you don't need to make a knot. A few large back stitches are enough to hold the fabric in place. It will be really easy and quick to cut them with the tip of your scissors to remove the basting. So, a few back stitches. Now for the next core, I decided to experiment for the first time with the basting stitch of my sewing machine. For long straight lines like that, I was blown away at how fast it was, even though I found that removing my hand basting was quicker, but maybe it's just that I'm used to it. Have a look at the difference. This is hand basting and this is machine basting. So our eight cores are done and I don't believe that it took me more than 30 minutes. Therefore, I truly think that it's worth going through the process of basting and check if everything is well aligned with the bodies, the seams, the darts. You can also check the length of the skirt, whether it's well balanced or if you lack the drape. You can make all the modifications you need and when you reach perfection, go ahead and sew everything in place forever and ever with your sewing machine or your serger. By the way, if you are using a serger, a great tip is to remove bit by bit the basting just before the fabric goes under the presser foot. But if you are using a sewing machine and you don't own any walking presser foot, leave the basting thread in place and sew at about a half millimeters next to it before removing it. This way you'll avoid all the shifts that can happen between the two layers of fabric. Congratulations, your skirt is done. We will need now to attach it to the bodice and insert an invisible zipper. First, I align and pin the seams and the darts from the bodice to the seams of the skirt. Honestly, I was happy that our fabric is a little bit stretchy, that helped a great deal and <laughs> yes, I had to cheat a little bit, but well, that's the purpose of these tutorials. I'm trying to challenge and improve myself a little bit more every time. <laughs> When I'm done with all the pinning, I am going to baste the bodice and the skirt together following the waistline. You can see that I left one centimeter of seam allowance for the skirt and about two to three centimeters for the bodice. That's why it might not look like it is well aligned to your eyes, but it is, mainly. <laughs> Make sure to check a very last time that every seams are aligned. I had to undo and rebaste twice <laughs> my waist to be happy with the result. Now it's time to use your sewing machine. Make sure to stitch at about a half millimeter next to the basting thread. This way you won't stitch it and it will be easily removed with tweezers. Then cut the excess fabric and open your seams with an iron. Now it's time to work on your invisible zipper. If you have never seen one, ask the shop assistant in your local store, they are not the same as the regular one. Open the zipper, turn it right side against the right side of the fabric and align it with the center back line. 
I really should have zoomed in for you to have a clearer view. It's the little tooth of the zipper that ought to be aligned on top of the center back line. Now is the time to be extra generous with your pinning. I'm not pinning though the whole length of the zipper because I bought on purpose a longer size. This way your zipper is much easier to insert. Stop the pinning at a place where you know that the zipper will open enough for you to put the dress on. Place a little mark with a pin there and place another one at the same level on the other side of the zipper. This way you'll stop pinning at the same level on the other back piece. Once this is done, baste your zipper quickly with the contrasting thread color. I really urge you not to skip this here. <laughs> Maybe if you are the god of invisible zippers, you might laugh at me, but I prefer taking all the necessary precautions. Voila, my zipper is based in place. Let's check that we can close it, that everything is well aligned at the neckline and also at the waist. If that is all good, you can go ahead and get rid of the middle back tracings. It's easier to remove it if you have used a contrasting thread color. This way you won't unstitch the wrong thread. We are going to use a special presser foot for invisible zipper. Have a look in your sewing machine cover. I'm pretty sure there is one of these right there since even the most basic machines come with one. The way they work is that you insert the tip of your zipper inside one of the groove of the presser foot and then you just let the magic happen. Everything aligns itself, but if you feel nervous, have a try first on a scrape of fabric. A few stitches back and forth and then repeat the same thing on the other side by inserting the teeth of your zipper in the other groove of the presser foot. Then I remove the basting thread. I cut the excess fabric and I'm going to check that the zipper works. It does! <laughs> we are now going to see what to do about the end of the zipper. It will be easier to turn our garment inside out to do so. There we are. First, we are going to pin both back gores of the skirt together. We are going to sew that directly with your sewing machine or your serger. Uh, there's no need to baste there, but it's certainly not forbidden. <laughs> But first, we are going to make a few stitches at about one or two centimeters below the place where we stopped sewing the zipper. This way we secure it because we are going to cut the excess. It will not open from the bottom and the head of the zipper will not zip out of its groove. I quickly search or sew my pieces together now. And for this little gap here close to the zipper, we are going to use the sewing machine. We need to join the gap between these two seams. A very narrow presser foot will allow us to sew extremely close from the zipper. It's actually a presser foot for regular zipper and it comes with almost every sewing machine. Now have a look, I'm making a little dent in the sewing allowance, but careful just in one layer. That allows me to open the seam and rest the zipper flat on top of it. I'm just going to make a few stitches to hold it in place and the bottom of our little zipper won't stick out anymore at a place where we, ladies, had rather have a round and smooth shape. <laughs> And finally, for today, we are going to cut the fabric at about one centimeter from the neckline tracing and we will finish it off with the searcher. You can also use the zigzag stitch of your sewing machine, that will work like a charm as well. We will see in the fourth and final episode how to finish the neckline beautifully. 
but before that we need to work on our lining and that's the subject of our next tutorial. The lining will give the dress full opacity, a beautiful drape and a more elegant finish. Also it will be more comfortable to wear because I decided to cut the lining in a soft and light cotton fabric. Congratulations! We have made it so far! <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Leave me a little hello in the comments. I'm always thrilled to share ideas and tips with fellow sewing lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to follow me on Instagram. Bye bye! A bientôt!